you know, this was my instant reaction post. This is what I wrote. They, they did what made sense tonight. And the draft to Mary Kay really seemed to fall the way they wanted it to fall. And as I'm sitting there watching it, we see Andrew Thomas go off the board early and you think, oh boy, this could get interesting. And then it really didn't get interesting. Everything kind of fell the way the Browns needed it to fall. It really did. I mean, they had uh, eventualities whereby all four offensive tackles were gone. And that is really why uh, that they had Trent Williams in their back pocket. If they needed to go to that, they would have. And it's not that, uh, that, they, that any one of those four would have been fine for them. I think they probably would have been happy with two of the four that we've talked about ad nauseum, maybe even three but they didn't have to go to their back back pocket. They didn't have to go to Trent Williams because the guy that they had rated number one overall at tackle fell to them in Jedrick Wills. They're thrilled about it. It went as well as they could have expected, and they are so happy about their pick. Yes, Scott, of all the people to sort of show their cards tonight, it was uh, it was Paul D. Podesta. Andrew Barry kind of still played it coy and – uh, even Kevin Stefanski didn't really come out and say where they had him right. But Paul Podesta basically said, hey, yeah, this was our number one guy from the start. Well, I mean, if you want to believe him, we know he was at least number two, right? You know, one or two. Uh, you know, it's weird. Everybody was talking about Andrew Thomas uh, over the last week. And I know Mekhi Becton got a lot of love in, in national mock drafts. But Jedrick Wills kind of fell through the cracks, I think. A lot of people probably thought worse or Thomas would be the one of the top guys to go. And then you know, here comes Jedrick Will. So now it's, you know, the question of can he switch sides? And the Browns seem to be happy with him. But, I mean, if you want to believe Deep Podesta that they got the top guy on their board, sure. What else is he going to say, you know? Well, I'm, I'm going to believe him, especially when, when Jonah Hill is, is playing him in the Browns version of the Moneyball <laughs> movie. Again, Ellis, um, to me, it, it just felt like – I mean, I never even thought Jedrick Wills would be there, honestly. You, you looked at mock drafts, you looked at how everything was falling, and I think this is one of those reminders that mock drafts are what they are, but you shouldn't always believe them. Uh, I, I just didn't believe that Jedrick Wills would actually be an option for this football team. Yeah, I thought he made a lot of sense at number four to the Giants, and that's why I'm going to believe Paul DiPodesto when he says that Wills was their number one tackle, because when you watch the tape, it checks out. Uh, this guy's feet move like pistons. I know if, if you're listening right now, you can't see, but I'm, you know, I'm firing away like this. His feet <laughs> are some of the best um, I've seen, and they look reserved for a, a basketball player on the perimeter trying to stay in front of someone. Uh, the way he moves at his size is as impressive as it gets. He's going to come in and be a pass pro professional right away. And then Kevin Stefanski talked about his upside in the run game. So it's both a safe and quite frankly, a home run pick. If you ask me, I guess Becton has the most upside because of his size, but you can't really say anything wrong or bad about this pick. They, they, they got it right here. Yeah, Doug, I mean, it's the marriage of it's the marriage of need and best player. I mean, I think that's what you actually wrote tonight. It's, it's that marriage of those two things. I am a little bit on the Scott Patsko bandwagon. If you okay. suckers believe in everything Deep Podesta says, <laughs> just because he says Wills was their first tackle. But I think the point is right. This is – and maybe this is a, a fine line. I feel much better about the idea that they at least got one of their top two tackles instead of having to take maybe the third tackle on their board. And I just think that's potentially a huge distinction. And with what all you guys did and analyzing different things, this almost worked out. It was, it was the only pick they could make because Isaiah Simmons didn't fall. Jeff Okuda didn't fall. They weren't going to take a receiver there. I think like, that, that at the very least, one of their top two tackles was there. As much as we all thought that Andrew Barry probably had 15 different contingencies planned, in the end, this was so obvious. But, Ellis, I think I agree with you. It's like it's obvious, but just because it's obvious doesn't mean it's not really good. Well, I think the other thing to consider here is they were surprised that there weren't more trades ahead of them. And, you know, there could have been a run on tackles. As you see, two, the two other guys went right after them uh, at 11 to the Jets and then 13. So, uh, you know, Worfs and Becton and then Worfs were gone right after that. If that little run had started earlier, you may have seen teams that really needed those tackles jump up and get them. But it really did fall their way, so they were lucky. And then I also think um, – 
I believe Paul De Podesta. There's just there's too many. Yes, there's another one. <laughs> there's too many <laughs> variables here, whereby um, you know the truth would come out at, at some point. If, if I just don't think that he would not be telling us the truth in that regard. Here, here's what here's why I will be a, a cynic, and um, th this is just something that I'm not sure I, I completely believe. You know, Andrew Barry said they wouldn't be pigeonholed into picking a tackle earlier in the week. And then tonight he said they were going to remain flexible, that, uh, you know, they didn't necessarily come into the night thinking they had to take a tackle. But I find it hard to believe that had they come out of tonight, barring Isaiah Simmons maybe being there at number 10 or, you know, maybe another defense, an Okuda falling down to number 10, something like that. I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have been at least a little bit disappointed if they didn't come out of tonight, tonight feeling really good about their left tackle position. I know Browns fans probably would have felt the same way. Ellis, you're, you're nodding your head. I, I just, I find it hard to believe that, yeah, maybe they wanted to be flexible or maybe they weren't going to be pigeonholed, but they had to get that left tackle if it was possible. Yeah, I think so. And on top of that, Dan,